Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for DE247. Like the past years, this year at Autodesk University in New Orleans, we spotted some cutting-edge technologies. Some are still in development, others are ready to be deployed right away in a design, engineering or manufacturing facility near you. This four-legged autonomous robot from Boston Dynamics is doing its best to compete with man's best friend. And this shoulder-mounted device from Navis, called Navis VLX, lets you scan and capture your surroundings in real time as you take a stroll. But perhaps the most prominent products are digital twin applications already deployed by some automakers. Today, I'll highlight some hardware making these applications possible. The ThinkReality A3 glasses is a, a device that was architected to work with multiple host devices. So in this use case, we're focusing on a problem that every designer or engineer knows very well. They are using their Autodesk or other platforms to create 3D objects, but they actually never see them spatially, even though they are all spatial design. So good example here on the screen is this particular object that is a radial engine. So in this platform, I could design and, uh, and uh, create this object, but this is still a flat screen. So in order to be able to see it spatially, we combine the power of TechViz, our software partner, and our glasses, the A3 glasses. And then with the help of that, we actually display it spatially, which you, of, of which you see spa uh, representation on this screen. Now you'll just have to take my word for it that the object that is right in front of me here is a 3D object which I can manipulate, right? So with the help of this space mice, right? I can bring it up, I can turn it around, which is completely independent of the, the, the creator platform. So the point is that you're, you as a creator, you're familiar with your platform, you use it as you otherwise you would be using it, and on top of that, we just layer the, the TechWiz platform and our glasses and suddenly you have it all in glorious 3D. So this is what we call the Think Reality PC edition, connected to a workstation, uh, in this case, our, one of our P1 Gen 4 workstations with the TechWiz software running on top. So this is our A3 glasses with what we call the content-oriented frame. But when I put on what I would call the industrial frame, which it doubles as a protective equipment, you see the difference. It's lighter and larger. Also on the sides, you see they wear protective flaps, but it's underneath, it's exactly the same device. And now I'm fully mobile with a 5G device that is running the application. And um, unfortunately, you just have to take my word for it that what I'm seeing is a building and in front of this, I'm standing in front of this building, and when I look at the enter sign, the cursor interacts with the enter sign, and suddenly I find myself inside. And as I look around, I see the IFC data, all the metadata associated with the individual objects uh, here and there. So I can actually walk in this building, just making sure I'm not bumping into uh, this counter here and the chairs here. And literally enables me to take an object that we being created on one of those de uh, uh, devices, bring it and out and in, literally into the field. This is the Lenovo P620. It uses the Chagall, which is the, the latest AMD Threadripper Pro class CPU. You get up to 64 cores. Uh, they've also increased the uh, turbo clock speed 4.5 gigahertz that makes it ideal for any customer that needs the highest level of multi-threaded performance but also has single threaded performance needs as well and that's an awful lot of customers uh, in addition to that you're going to be uh, what you saw was two nvidia rtx a6000 graphics cards professional graphics cards they're using NVLink in order to uh, stitch them together, which gives you up to 96 gigabytes of frame mem or video memory. So for very demanding applications where graphics is important, so these would include what you see here, the digital twins, VR, AR, which you were mentioning, AI type of work, 
there's nothing that's going to beat that level of performance. And when you combine the very high end graphics cards with a very advanced CPU, then they're basically you're eliminating uh, virtually all the bottlenecks that would normally take place on anything that's lesser than this uh, P620. So those are RTX A6000s, and you can see they're NV linked together. And so that basically allows both of those uh, GPUs to work together as one. So basically the RTX A6000 is the highest end graphics card from NVIDIA today. So that really gives you a tremendous amount of performance. And you can see all the red parts of it are going to be customer interactable and that allows you to go in and to know what to touch safely into the systems and where you can remove different components. And basically, uh, you've got the CPUs up here. Uh, that large heat sink is gonna keep you from throttling. And then you have your choice of NVMe, PCIe, SSDs, or M.2s, or you can get rotating hard drives. And that allows you to get the highest level of uh, storage performance. Or if you need more capacity, we have three and a half inch hard drives that are 10 terabytes, so you can get an awful lot of local storage if you want that. And of course, you know, you have plenty of uh, expansion. So if you wanted to attach that, even in the data center to a NAS or a SAN, we have solutions that will allow you to do that. So what we have right here is the 3660 Precision Fixed Workstation. And these types of workstations, when they're configured correctly, uh, can help customers be able to leverage reality capture in a totally new way. When you think about reality capture, and reality capture is really just, whether it's point clouds, or it's mobile mapping, or it's photogrammetry, it's a capture of an existing condition. And the thing about that is today, the capture technology has gotten faster, and it's gotten cheaper. And that's great for the people doing the capturing, but what they have to do with all that data on the back end is they have to process it, they have to analyze it, and the speed at which they're able to do that is the speed at which they're able to make decisions about what they're capturing. So this is actually a, a covered bridge data set in New Hampshire, and we can fly through this, and we can measure from it. So let's say we wanted to check the clearance of this height here. Now there's billions of points in this data set, but you can see with the 3660, I'm able to quickly measure and fly through this data set. I'll pick a point there, I'll pick a point below it, and I can check that at 9.122 feet. So if I'm checking clearances, this is a digital capture of an existing condition, a snapshot in time. And 3660 allows the processing power to deal with those extra large data sets in a very fast and reliable way. Now these types of workflows are heavily reliant upon the CPU. This CPU is an Intel Core 12th Gen i9 processor. That means it's got lots of cores and it's got lots of speed. And you need both with Reality Capture. You cannot just have one. There's lots of these workflows uh, in Reality Capture that may be single, partially single-threaded and then the rest of it is multi-threaded. So you really have to have the best of both worlds and the Intel 12th Gen Core processors allow you to do that. On the GPU side, this actually has a really powerful NVIDIA RTX A 5500. That enables anything you want to do with this, whether it's VR with this data set, it's real-time rendering, and allows you to manage the real mega, mega data sets. The memory also is extremely important on systems like this. We recommend 64 gigabytes or even 128 gigabytes of RAM when you deal with these large data sets. And it's really important, people sometimes miss the Gen 4 NVMe drives. It's about data throughput. You can have all the computing power in the world. If you can't throughput that data in and out of your memory, you're really gonna be throttling back the power that you're paying for with your CPU. For our report on AU 2022, check out the post at DE247, digitalengineering247.com. For more engineering-related news, also follow us on Twitter at DE Editor and on YouTube at DE Streaming. Until next time, happy engineering and see you later.